Hi everyone, this is Professor Rust. I wanted to share with you some comments to help you with lecture number 9, 20th Century Social Critics. The focus of this lecture is about life in the United States during a time period of conspicuous consumption in the post-World War II era. Conspicuous consumption, Garcia writes, would make the issues of capitalism, scarcity, and the deification of citizens into consumers. The lecture begins by examining Thorstein Veblen's uh, issues with class consumption in his writings about the leisure class. Garcia writes that Veblen suggests that there are three classes beginning at the second historical stage of development. The upper class, consisting of two sections, the business and the industrial. What this means is that there are two classes in society, the upper and the lower, and the upper class has two sections within it, the business and the industrial. The leisure class, which was made up of the business section, and the industrial class, made up of captains of industry, were the driving force in American society. Garcia explains about Veblen that the drive of society is the drive for innovation in lifestyle and production. The new production promotes new lifestyles. This is very much like the new technologies we enjoy today, like the iPhone, which leads to new lifestyles through social media. What Veblen is saying is that the evolution of society substantially is a process of mental adaptation on the part of individuals under the stress of circumstances which will no longer tolerate habits of thought formed under and conforming to a different set of circumstances in the past. One way to understand what Veblen is saying is to see society changing in reacting to new technologies and rejecting earlier norms of living. It's kind of like being a pager salesman today when everyone is using a cell phone. Pagers are no longer in demand and someone who sells pagers would be considered out of step with the present. In other parts of the lecture, we read about Ferdinand Tony's Community and Society where he argues that there are two mental habits in man. He's argued that man changes as a result of a change in his human will to carry out patterns of organization, and that there are two human wills, the individual and the collective, and with society comes the collective will. Jane Addams is a good example of both the individual and the collective will when we examine her efforts through Hull House. Adams believed that everyone, instead, just needed to realize their inner longing, a primordial feeling to help others to move beyond starvation and poverty. By helping others, they help themselves. Adams expressed this individual and collective approach to society by focusing upon the youth of early 20th century America. She believed that the youth would waste their time and energy on fun and intellectual work, such as academics. Therefore, her social theory was based more on pragmatism. In a pragmatic pursuit, Adams initiated her settlement movement. Hull House is an example of the settlement movement, where she believed that <clears throat> the passage to active citizenship was a gateway for people to live lives as truly productive, democratic Christians. Later on, we read about H.L. Mencken and his essay, The American Nietzsche. His reading of Nietzsche led Mencken to believe that men are unequal and some men are stronger than others. He argued that the problem was based upon a religious threat of Puritanism in American history. Mencken identified a change he saw in American thought that took place after the Civil War. It was what he called a neo-Puritan identity. This neo-Puritanism, he wrote, 
in the soul of the United States sought to eliminate vices, criminal activities, and the rights and righting of all wrong. This muted strain of Puritanism, Mencken argued, merged with America's new developed sense of will to power that came after the Second World War and sought not individual salvation, but salvation for everyone, born out of the victory in the Second World War, a victory to spread a free, universal, and compulsory democratic salvation. This leads us to Thurman Arnold's New Liberalism, where he argued that this new post-World War II liberalism emphasized the use of the state, the national government, with power to be situated within the executive branch, the President of the United States, which did occur as the United States emerged from World War II with a super powerful executive branch, much more in line with Alexander Hamilton's ideas. Both parties today, Democrats and Republicans, are born out of this FDR vision of new liberalism. There is a basic difference, however, in that the Democratic Party believes in government intervention for society's regulation, using the executive branch to balance freedom in society. The Republican Party would not want to see as much interventionism, but is still interventionist. Many of these ideas come together in the amount of intervention in society for new changes in ideology and understanding of technology. The intervention of the government with the role of the individual are all discussed throughout the lecture. And these are some ideas to help you as you consider the meaning of this lecture. I hope that you have benefited from these comments if you have additional questions or need additional help, please feel free to reach out to me and we can discuss via email or an online face-to-face. -face. Good luck, everyone.